Alright guys, I'm a huge Dark Souls, Souls-like fan, so Lies of P looks really interesting. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this game wasn't on my radar until it was actually used in AMD's, um, you know, well I guess it was a CPU announcement, but they did tease their new RX 7000 series graphics cards running a game at 4K Ultra settings, and the game they actually chose to run, my head is way too big, ah! Um, <laughs> was Lies of P. Now we didn't get any actual performance information on how well it was running, we just know it was running at 4K Ultra settings on the new RDNA 3 GPU, um, but that kind of got me curious, what is this game? And then I did notice that at Gamescom 2022 it did win several awards, uh, with Most Wanted PlayStation Game, as well as Best Action Adventure Game and Best Role Playing Game. So I was like, okay, pretty interesting, what do we know about it? Well, there doesn't seem to be an official release date, ah, but there does seem to be some official system requirements. But then that took me down a little bit of a rabbit hole when I spotted some things that just seem weird. Like placing an RX 560 alongside a GTX 1050 Ti, uh, for this performance tier. Also, at least for now, and I could do an updated video if they give us a better system requirements list, but at least for now, this seems to be one of those really old school, just minimum recommended, they're not telling us a resolution, frame rate, graphic settings, uh, anything like that. So I can speculate a little bit, but you know, all I've got is what, what we've got here, okay? Um, but again, okay, so quick stuff out of the way and then we'll talk to GPUs. So um, memory, if you have eight gigabytes of RAM, you can get in the door, but 16 gigabytes will be recommended. That's pretty standard these days and it's a DX12 game. Uh, let's hope it doesn't stutter. <laughs> And then um, I'll talk about CPUs at the end, but GPUs. Okay, so first thing I noticed is an RX 560 and 1050 Ti are very modest uh, minimum requirements. Although that does lead me to believe that this minimum, although they don't say it, is probably only like a 30 FPS at the very lowest settings. 1080p, and some games are even talking like 900p. Now the graphics in this game, I don't know, didn't look insane to me, but these days it's hard to tell how well optimized a game is, so I don't know. If I had to guess, I'd say 1080p low settings at around 30 FPS, but there's kind of a disparity between the RX 560 and the GTX 1050 Ti, and if you're also wondering like, where does your GPU fall relative to these? Well, let's look at these GPUs relative to each other uh, on this relative performance chart at Tech Power Up, and as I always have to bring up, some games favor one architecture over another, whether that's AMD or Nvidia, or even just different series of AMD or Nvidia GPUs. This chart is not perfect, and especially the older uh, the GPUs get, the more kind of out of date the data might be with current drivers and things like that. But if we look at a GTX 1050 Ti, um, this is still a fairly popular GPU, although it is relatively weak these days. Um, it could be a bit stronger than like a GTX 960, things like that. Uh, it's definitely stronger than the 1050 non-TI. Um, but if I scroll down here, we'll find the RX 560 at a, a fairly significant performance deficit from the 1050 Ti. So that might actually mean that there's a wider range of GPUs in here that works. And I'm actually kind of wondering what would explain this disparity. And it's possible that this studio just, you know, doesn't have a million old GPUs to test. And maybe this is just their old AMD GPU. This is their old Nvidia GPU. They tested them. It was able to run the game okay at like 30 FPS at low settings. And so they just threw that in the system requirements list. So I'm not saying you need to necessarily read way too much into that performance disparity, but it is something to note. And again, you may have, have found your, um, uh, your GPU somewhere nearby here, and you can see it's performance relative to that uh, 1050 Ti. Uh, now, if we jump up to the recommended, which once again, it doesn't tell us a resolution, frame rates, graphic settings, but this is a significant jump. So let's look at this. So if we look at the NVIDIA uh, one, we're looking at RTX 2060, and then the Radeon RX 6700, which is not even the XT version. So I'm, <laughs> it's honestly a little bit surprising to me, not only that they would pair a 6700 with a 2060, those aren't usually performance competitors, <laughs> um, but also that if they're just kind of pulling random or just popular GPUs that they happen to have, 
I wonder if they really mean the non-XT version of the 6700, because that's a fairly obscure card that kind of came out only fairly recently without a lot of fanfare. But anyway, let's jump in again to relative performance. Uh, going up from the 1050 Ti, and again, you might spot your GPU on this list so you can see how it performs relative to this absolute minimum, at least on the NVIDIA side of the, the, the minimum stuff. You know, we can see like, uh, if you have something like a 1650, that's a bit stronger than the 1050 Ti. RX 6400 is a bit stronger, and ARC A380 from Intel is a bit stronger if it's a game that runs well, but who knows how the drivers go on that. <laughs> uh, you know, GTX 970 is actually significantly stronger than a 1050 Ti. Your GTX 1060, which is still very popular, is significantly more powerful than that minimum uh, minimum requirement. You know, you got your 1650 Supers, GTX 1660, 980 Ti. Uh, we're getting to almost like double the performance of that minimum requirement. Uh, 1070, 3050, we're still rolling. If we get all the way up here, we're passing stuff like the 1080. So. In the, in the ballpark of the GeForce recommendation of that RTX 2060, we're at GPUs like a GTX 1080, RX 5700, and RX 6600 is a bit stronger, um, 5600 XT. These are GPUs kind of in that ballpark of this 2060. And notice that it's about 2.5 times faster than our minimum requirement. So in my opinion, this is how I'm gonna take this. Like I said, I'm assuming the minimums were for 1080p 30fps at low settings. And so I would, uh, you know, again, speculate that the RTX 2060 being about 2.5 times faster, well, two times faster would allow us to be at 60fps instead of 30. And then that extra 0.5, you know, uh, would allow to turn up the graphics settings. And now recommended isn't always like a max the game out kind of a recommendation. Um, but a lot of times it's, a, it's at least at like a high setting um, and not usually below a medium setting. So I would assume for 1080p 60 FPS at something like the high settings maybe, uh, the RTX 2060 seems to be uh, you know a reasonable expectation at what this might mean. And then uh, we have this RX 6700, which like I said, seems a bit weird to me. So I'm gonna set the RTX 2060 as a baseline now. And the 6700, a non-XT, I could look it up separately, but it even, doesn't even show up in their normal list here because it is, like I said, kind of an obscure GPU. Um, uh, it's usually a little bit better or kind of, it's definitely between a 6600 XT and a 6700 XT when the drivers are working properly. There's not a lot of full reviews out and I don't have one myself personally. But look, even if we call it, you know, a 6600 XT level and usually better, that is a pretty healthy performance jump from the RTX 2060. So I guess I'm surprised that they didn't list something like the RX 6600 or a Vega 64 or, you know, an RX 5600 XT as the uh, kind of matching requirement with that 2060. So again, maybe this is just the GPUs that they have on hand to test. So they tested these um, more mid-range modern-ish GPUs and they ran well. So they just threw them up here on the recommended without any particular, um, uh, you know, graphic settings or resolution or anything like that. So anyway, it's hard to tell exactly what they mean here, but that's the information that I've got for you. And you probably were able to spot your GPU somewhere along here. If you're stronger than this 2060, I would assume that that might mean that now you could push up to maybe 1440p or max out the settings at 1080p or higher frame rates, assuming it doesn't have a frame rate cap as all the Souls games <laughs> seem to want to have. Um, anyway, so, it's hard to say too much other than that uh, besides diving into the CPUs. So if we take a look at the CPUs, we've got an AMD Ryzen 3 1200 or an Intel Core i5-7500 for the minimum. And both of those are four core, four thread CPUs, the Ryzen 3 1200 and the i5-7500. So four core, four thread CPUs are listed for the minimum. Uh, the Ryzen 3 1200 is a 2017 CPU, and the i5-7500 is also a 2017 CPU. So they're listing four core, four thread CPUs from around 2017 as the minimum. Uh, so nothing too crazy there. And it is interesting, a lot of games these days um, 
their minimums uh, at least go up to like four core eight threads. So this doesn't seem too crazy on that uh, on that requirement. And then, uh, but like I said though, for the minimum, it's not necessarily guaranteeing you an, a flat 60 FPS the whole time. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, recommended, which I would assume is guaranteeing you more of a, a smooth, at least 60 FPS kind of minimums most of the time, <laughs> no guarantees ever, I guess, uh, is the Ryzen 5 3600, which is jumping up a couple generations. This is now a six core 12 thread uh, CPU from 2019 and has significantly better gaming performance than the R3 1200. And then the uh, Intel recommended is an i7 8700, which is also six core 12 thread and is from 2018. So a big, big jump up there to the recommended, and I think that would get you the much smoother experience. But again, the particular models they, they could be using here might just be what they have on hand for testing, so we don't wanna read too far into it. Um, but anyway, are you guys excited for this game? It looks really interesting to me. Um, I'd certainly, uh, I'll, I'll probably want to play it. <laughs> um, but again, I don't think we even have an official release date or anything like that yet. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.